for the kind words. I don't know how I will fit into this forum where the topic mainly based on the basics uh, where at low resource setting. So the talk for me is newer advances in diabetic foot management. So even though some of it can be used in the lower resource setting, uh, many a times uh, this may be uh, not possible because of the cost concerns. I do understand, but maybe the organizers put me at the last because I think it is also important to understand what is the new options available and if needed to be referred to a higher center. With that introduction, let me start my topic. So as my previous speaker rightly said, 80% of the amputations are preceded by foot ulcers. Early referral is very important to a podiatry speciality center. This was uh, way back in King's College 2001, where I was trained under Dr. Mike Edmonds. He was one of the pioneer centers in the world, started the diabetic foot or the podiatric clinics. Well, my first talk is on, first part of the talk is on the medical management of PAD and what's the advance in it. Well, the prevalence we know is increasing. Initially, about 10 years back, the prevalence were much lesser. As patients are becoming uh, younger and younger and getting into multiple comorbidities like dyslipidemia, diabetes, PAD also is increasing. That is peripheral vascular disease. 29% of the patients nowadays have peripheral vascular disease. So I would like you to take a note of this molecule that is rivaroxaban uh, and take you to this uh, trial that is the COMPASS trial in chronic CAD and PAD patients. So this was a uh, so this is the COMPASS trial and there's about 27,000 patients were taken in this trial where rivaroxaban, the one arm was rivaroxaban 2.5 milligram BD with aspirin and another was with rivaroxaban alone and another arm was with aspirin alone. For 23 months the trial was but it was stopped before because of the excellent results which was. Now I would like to take you to um, these subgroup analysis of this uh, study where PAD, the benefit of PAD was um, looked into. So in this study, apart from the maze, that is the all-cause mortality, uh, which significantly reduced with 28% uh, with these, this combination of aspirin and uh, rivaroxaban was seen. And the benefit, you can see the graph was is widening from the very beginning of the, uh, the study itself. And the excellent thing is a 46% risk reduction of major amputations with this combination of rivaroxaban small dose in 2.5 with aspirin um, showed excellent result. And uh, so the study concluded that there is a 28% reduction of stroke, CV deaths, heart attacks, etc. But apart from that, in peripheral arterial disease patients, there's a 70% reduction in the rate of amputation. So, amputations were avoided in 7 out of 10 patients who otherwise might have lost the limb. It's an excellent result. And this molecule can be used at any setting, any uh, treating physician. And the risk of uh, bleeding and all is very low. Um, because it's a very low uh, dose of this molecule and along with aspirin. Now come, I switch gears to another topic and another uh, new approach in the management of diabetic foot, that is uh, the management of charcoal foot. Till now we were treating with pamidronate or, or the bisphosphonates and uh, uh, the calcitonin, etc. But they have not found to be very, very effective from all the trials. Um, some benefits and some not, but so there were reason nuances in this, and that's what I'm going to talk on this. Uh, diabetics patients have about 0.1 to 1% of 
of Chakot Arthropathy. But once they have neuropathy, the risk increases by 7%. So uh, that's very important. And uh, one more thing I want to say is we did a study. We found that patients who had neuropathy, this is in reflecting on the data, uh, where monofilaments were high risk and biotisiometer was high. These are high risk patients. As my previous speaker said, these are high risk patients, also, not only for ulceration, but also for developing Charcot foot. And it, you need to have high clinical suspicion. A patient comes to you with a, a swelling or a mild pain or a redness. You have to think of Charcot foot. And definitely, if they have severe neuropathy, think of Charcot foot. Of course, I'm not going into the diagnostic part of it, but I'm going into the treatment where denosumab is the new kid in the block. Uh, the uh, it's actually acting at the rankle pathway uh, where it is through that the signaling your class hack happening and which is the reason for the Charcot. So it's a human monoclonal antibody that selectively binds with high affinity to rankle and preventing activation of its rankle receptor on the surface of the osteoclast, resulting in the inhibition of osteoclastic activity reduction of bone resorption. So these are three uh, studies which I just want to show you. You can see that the trial is all. Denosumab 1 injection subcutaneous, you can give it in your clinic, no need of admission. Of course, uh, total contact cause was given and you can see that a good resolution was seen uh, um, this molecule in another study. It's all small study, it's too early to say. I, I'm sure that we all have to uh, uh, come up with our own studies, our own treatment uh, experiences in the coming years. We will be able to tell you more. But with this small group of studies, they have found excellent seven, the next study is seven patients and they found uh, excellent the exit from the acute phase average of 52 uh, days after the injection. Next study, again, seven patients. All patients had clinically improved. Five patients showed stability, structural I now take you to the next. Of course, we have to also give the total contact cast to these and give the offloading. Apart from now, I take you to the next product, uh, which has come found to be very useful. That is the uh, dehydrated human chorionic membrane allograft, uh, which restores the wound bed physiology while supporting the natural healing uh, of acute and chronic wounds. So what makes the dehydrated human amniotic membrane unique? The natural skin substitute derived from the human placenta acts as a biological barrier membrane, which in multiple extracellular matrix contains more than 200 cytokines, chemo, chemokines, and growth factors present in the human placental tissue, provides a matrix and retains biological activities that support cell proliferation and no immunogenicity and ready to use an yeast handle, bioabsorbable, does not require thawing, ability to modulate inflammation, hands wound healing, use pain and scar tissue. And it's very cost effective. It can be used at any clinical settings, the OPD level, for small wounds as well as large wounds. But the basic treatment has to be that is offloading and debridement or hepatic coverage. Final wound closure is much better and much faster. So increased formation of granulation tissue increases keratinocyte and fibroblastic activity, helps remove the non-viable tissue, reduces wound pain rapidly and effectively, reduces wound uh, mal order, reduces slough within the wound. Uh, MP in very so this was a study comparing the molecule with silver dressings. That it are superior than the wound closure, time of heal, etc. So these are some case studies where you can see the excellent results uh, with this molecule, and it's not very expensive, not very expensive, and it's very easy. any clinic, much effective even than 
the older growth uh, factor gels which was available this is much if uh, than these are just some of the uh, cases just want to show you the result again to show you so once the debridement is done and once the uh, the wound is seem to be less infectious you can send the patient home now i take you to another molecule that is the stimulant that is the pre absorbable antibiotic carrier for uh, management of dfus so here again it is a powder antibiotic carrier powder the um stimulant targets the high concentration of antibiotic at the point of infection level unachievable systematically sorry systemically and lowers the rate of reinfection saves the cost and improves the patient out stimulant is very effective we have used it we have used these tools all these things and very effective uh, compared to the older kind of therapies so patented absorbable calcium matrix ca cleared presence of infection you can use impregnate with the uh, culture specific antibiotic put it as beads into the wound area and leave you can send the patient as early from discharge the patient to their homes and uh, patient can report to you once in a week and then you can you don't have to do any dress for just removing the for uh, you can see excellent results with this so again this is the a study a small study which showed rapid cure with this stimul and last uh, but an important for development in the area of diabetic food management is the intra in integra dermal regeneration template which may be uh, may not be an ideal thing for a so setting but maybe at a higher center again these are only needed for patients who need like crafting crafting or a need a uh, all the where the bones are exposed a uh, allograft or medical crafting etc so these are three layered um templates where you have epidermal layer dermal layer etc and uh, you put it onto this uh, wound where there is tendon exposed or bone exposed then it it's excellent and uh, Course, not be infection. Infection. This you can see it, and uh, well, the um, the founder trial or, or the uh, foot ulcer new dermal replacement study, and you can see that it was a large multi-center prospective RCT trial, and you can see the wound closure is much faster compared to the normal older kind of uh, treatment. and uh, three times higher closure 59% increase uh, wound closure in patients with using this where there is bone exposure tendon exposures all can be settled you don't need the other kind of severe uh, and uh, excellent result these are some of the results so the take home message is podiatry is an evolving specialty it is still evolving and uh, we are able to reduce lots of amputations treated at the right time in the right way you delay the treatment if you delay the correct treatment to the correct patient then those may not be good so uh, there are newer advances keep abreast with the new advances keep doing your treatment along along with the advances and the excellent results this are uh, our studies and we have been able to save more than 85% of our patients from amputations uh, with this newer techniques this was few years back which we did a audit of our patients i'm sure with the newer therapies the amputation rates have come up much lower than the only problem which we still face is patients so a uh, very late and that's the only reason but i think with this newer and i'm sure with this uh, new molecule with rivaroxaban and aspirin even the pvd problems may come and again the early to say about the benefit of nisomab uh, in charcoal food we have given patients we have to say time being it thank you dr jani